February 1st, 2015, St. Joseph says, Praise be to Jesus. Today I come to address all fathers once again. I encourage fathers to be stable and strong leaders, but to pray to overcome a tendency towards impatience, even anger. Make allowances for weaknesses or frailties of those in your charge, gently helping them to overcome such things. Be open to the spirit of wisdom, which helps you to communicate righteousness. Such a grace this is. Do not be discouraged by the enormous task that lies ahead. Remain calmly in the present moment. God will lead you and provide for you. February 1st, 2015, St. Thomas Aquinas says, Praise be to Jesus. You must never place obedience above living in the truth. This is what draws whole factions of people off course. An extreme example of this would be terrorism. They obey untruth and kill in the name of untruth. You must realize that God commands only that which builds up the body of Christ through a virtuous life. Every virtue is based upon holy love and built upon humility. These truths should not be dictated against. Such opposition opposes God himself. Such errors divide and weaken the kingdom of God. The Son of Man did not suffer and die so that you could live in doubts and confusion, but so that you would live in union with holy love. Do not believe one thing in your heart, but live according to error. A note is given to read Mark, chapter 7, 6 through 8. Synopsis, love according to the Ten Commandments, which holy love embodies, and not according to the ways of humans, the ways of the world. He said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. Scripture verses asked to be read by St. Thomas Aquinas. February 2nd, 2015. Our Lady comes as Mary, refuge of holy love. She says, Praise be to Jesus. Today, with the weather so extreme and your health so frail, you will stay inside, protected from the elements, my messenger. I use this occasion to draw attention to the frail spiritual state of the heart of the world. I come to invite all people and all nations into the shelter of my Immaculate Heart, refuge of holy love. Never before has my call been so urgent. The heart of the world has never before been so vulnerable and in need of my motherly protection. The world has been made smaller due to modern communications and modes of transportation. Therefore, it is easier for evil to spread. For sadly, these advances have been used by Satan. The shelter of my heart is a protection against the elements of evil. Herein I will protect your faith and help you to determine good from evil. Satan's confusion and compromise cannot penetrate the inner confines of my heart. If you but say, Protectress of the faith, come to my aid, I will envelop your heart in my own heart and protect you. Dear children, you must be aware of the spiritual dangers of these times, or your heart will succumb to error. You can see the dangers in the severe weather of the day. Look as well at the imminent spiritual dangers all around you. You cannot go outside today without the protection of warm clothing. You cannot survive spiritually without the protection of my heart. February 3rd, 2015. Our Lady comes as Mary, refuge of holy love. She says, Praise be to Jesus. Today I come to address those who believe in these messages of holy love, yet do not live in holy love. Such as these are more culpable before God than those who do not believe for false reasons. 
Hearing the messages and believing the messages carries with it the responsibility of changing that in your life which is not holy love. This is very often means this very often means a change in attitude regarding relationships with people, trying to increase in virtue, and pursuing a deeper prayer life. How sad it is to hear the truth and ignore it. The messages call you to have childlike faith, a faith that does not seek its own advantage, an unselfish attitude in every situation. This is not easy and requires much effort while cooperating with grace. Dear children, do not make the mistake of hearing and believing but not living the messages. Each message is for you. February 4th, 2015, Our Lady comes as Mary, refuge of holy love. She says, Praise be to Jesus. I have come yet again to point out that the reason peace is so fragile in the world is that the heart of the world has not surrendered to holy love. In this attitude, the peace in hearts is very fragile at best. You have false religions which promote every sort of violence in the name of a false god who does not exist. You have addictions to drugs, power and consumerism, ruling hearts and actions. You have complacency in, on the part of leaders who hesitate to separate good from evil. Through all of this, heaven sends me to invite the heart of the world into holy love. But once again, confusion and compromise have taken over, portraying my call to you as disingenuous. Dear children, you must not allow Satan to confuse you about holy love. I have come from heaven to rescue you from the path of destruction. My son taught you about holy love when he was with you. It is no less worthy a call today than when he walked the earth. Do not allow Satan to confuse you. Because of these times, holy love is even more vital today than ever. Do not look to the world to bring peace and harmony. You can only find true peace through holy love. Live in holy love. A note is given to read 1 John chapter 3, 19 through 24. Synopsis, a good conscience is one formed in the truth that is holy love. If we keep the commandments living in holy love, whatever we ask of God we shall receive, because when we live in holy love, God abides in us, and we in God, as verified by the Holy Spirit, whom he has given us. By this we shall know that we are of the truth, and reassure our hearts before him, whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God, and we receive from him whatever we ask, because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he has commanded us. All who keep his commandments abide in him, and he in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the Spirit which he has given us. Scripture verses asked to be read by Mary, Refuge of Holy Love. February 5th, 2015, St. Joseph says, Praise be to Jesus. I tell you, the enemy that lies hidden in hearts is more dangerous than the enemy most obvious in the world. This is because if you do not identify your enemy, you cannot oppose him or protect yourself against him. This is why the, di the discernment between good and evil is so vital in the spiritual life. Satan does everything in his power to cover his actions and disguise his purpose. Be wise enough to use holy love as a winnowing fan to separate good from evil. Do not follow someone for the sake of following. Follow those 
who support the truth. February 6, 2015, Our Lady comes as Mary, refuge of holy love. She says, Praise be to Jesus. Just as Jesus' heart and my heart are united, it is necessary for all hearts to be united in holy and divine love. This is the solution for every problem which plagues the world today. In this solution is the end to war, terrorism spawned by false religions, disease, natural disasters, and more. The bad fruit of not complying with this solution is all around you. Added to this is the compromise of truth and the abuse of authority, which conceal and camouflage the necessity of choosing this solution. I can only tell you what Jesus sends me to say. It is up to each one to choose my advice in the present moment. The journey through the sacred chambers of our united hearts is the way to choose this solution in humility and love. Make it known. February 6, 2015. Jesus is here with his heart exposed. He says, I am your Jesus, born incarnate. My brothers and sisters, you have been given the recipe towards personal holiness through the chambers of our united hearts. As with any recipe, if you leave out an ingredient, the final product is altered. Therefore, I beseech you, do not try to skip these serious and important steps through the chambers of our united hearts, for your holiness is at stake. Tonight, I am blessing you with my blessing of divine love. February 7, 2015, Blessed Mother says, Praise be to Jesus. I have come once again to heal the wounds of the heart of the world and the heart of the Church. Jesus' mournful heart is real and gravely offended by the compromise of truth and the abuse of authority. The time is at hand for a strong spiritual voice to speak out in defense of righteousness in the face of so many errors supported not only by your president, but multiple world leaders. Heaven's intervention here at Maranatha Spring and Shrine is the solution, but the world will never accept it as long as those in power present it as unauthentic. But where is the voice of the church leaders in the face of misinformation concerning Christians in general and in the pro-life effort? What spiritual leader will condemn the beheading and burning alive of my children? Do not remain silent to accommodate evil. If you are given authority in the world or in the church, use it to support godliness, not to win popularity. Remember, God judges hearts, and it is the holy love in your hearts that earns your salvation, not the numbers you placated with your silence. Yes, we need a strong spiritual voice to speak out without fear of offending, without fear of losing popularity or jeopardizing power. This is not the time to think of self, but of the greater good of godliness and human dignity. Even your silence is a choice, a choice in support of evil. A note is given to read 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 16 through 17. Synopsis, your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit. Do you not know that you are God's temple and that God's Spirit dwells in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy him. For God's temple is holy, and that temple you are. Scripture verses asked to be read by Blessed Mother. February 8, 2015. I am your Jesus, born incarnate. Where is the outcry of good Christians against your president's defilement of the National Prayer Breakfast? which he used as a format to take Christians to task. 
Where is the outrage at this same president's inability to define radical Islam as evil and a threat to world peace? What enemy is your president combating? Is it lack of popularity? If it is, he should have long ago succumbed in this battle. I submit to the conscience of this once great nation, you must return to godliness before you destroy yourselves. Pay attention to where you are being led. Is it away from the commandments, or does your leader embrace holy love? Your priorities must not be dependency on government assistance, but on righteousness, freedom of religion, and honesty. You are not being led by grace and prayerful decision, but by arrogance and abuse of power. The principles your nation was founded upon do not support such a leader. A note is given to read 1 Timothy chapter 4, 1 through 2 and 7 through 8. The synopsis, prophecy and warning not to turn away from the faith and heed deceitful spirits as taught by deceitful men. Now the Spirit expressly says that in later times some will depart from the faith by giving heed to deceitful spirits and doctrines of demons through the pretensions of liars whose consciences are seared, have nothing to do with godless and silly myths. Train yourself in godliness, for while bodily training is of some value, godliness is of value in every way as it holds promise for the present life and also for the life to come. Scripture verses asked to be read by Jesus. February 9th, 2015. I am your Jesus, born incarnate. I mourn the loss of truth in hearts and the weakening of integrity in those in authority. This has happened as I am no longer in the center of hearts, Hearts are now centered on free will. Free will is focused on self-gratification. You cannot serve every form of sensuality and me. The center of your existence must be to love God and neighbor. Every truth flows from and around this maxim. Truth and integrity cannot be made to fit into the mold of self-love. Rather, Self-love must conform to truth and integrity. Today, the world is reeling under false security based on half-truths which are Satan's lies. No nation can be a diplomatic power in such a way, but will only become unraveled in the final test. The final test will be between truth and untruth, holy love versus evil. A note is given to read 1 Timothy chapter 2, 1 through 4. The synopsis, pray for all leaders in high positions of authority, that they lead a godly, respectful life, conformed to integrity and truth. First of all, then, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for all men, for kings, and all who are in high positions, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life, godly and respectful in every way. This is good, and it is acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Scripture verses asked to be read by Jesus. February 9th, 2015. Jesus is here with his heart exposed. He says, I am your Jesus, born incarnate. My dear family of holy love, tonight I offer you peace in your hearts if you live the solution to earth's problems, which is holy love. Strengthen the truth in hearts by propagating holy love, for it is a vehicle of peace and truth. Tonight I am extending to you my blessing of divine love. February 10th, 2015 I am your Jesus, born incarnate. Once again I tell you that it is not who you obey, but what you obey that counts. A person may be seated upon the highest throne, 
carry a title which demands the highest respect, even be supported by laws which dem demand obedience. But in my eyes he is nothing unless he has holy love in his heart. Holy love flavors every action of the just man. Holy love is the path and the gateway to salvation. Holy love in the heart deserves esteem and acts with integrity. Such a heart is incapable of untruth. Therefore, a heart steeped in holy love cannot wound my mournful heart with compromise of truth. Such a leader or person of esteem would never abuse his authority, for he does not have self-interest at heart. Therefore, such a one is easy to obey through mutual holy love and respect. He protects the reputation of those who follow him. In him there is no guile or hidden agenda. The person who lives in holy love is at peace, for he trusts in me. He trusts my mercy and my provision. Without the foundation of holy love, the soul becomes too dependent on himself. Then he opens his heart to obey, obeying ungodliness. Remember my telling you these things as you look at the world situation. February 11th, 2015, the Feast of Our Lady of Lourdes. Our Lady comes as Our Lady of Lourdes. She says, Praise be to Jesus. When Jesus sent me to Lourdes to appear to St. Bernadette, it was to establish a site of healing and favor in the world. The Church did an honest and open investigation of the happenings, approved it, and many have come to believe. But today, Jesus has sent me with the same intent, to establish the Lords of this continent, a place of heaven's continual presence and favor. Yet it has been met with skepticism, disfavor from authorities, and even rash judgment and slander. The miraculous healings here are discounted, hidden under the rock of abuse of authority. Yet these miracles continue and proliferate. There has been no honest and forthright investigation of the multitude of messages and revelations, only a selective assessment of a scant few messages by the Diocese of Cleveland. If I had appeared today in Lourdes to St. Bernadette, the heavenly intervention never would have been accepted and approved. The attitude today is one of ownership of power, not to be challenged by heaven. But I continue to intervene at my son's request. Heaven continues to touch earth here, Maranatha Spring and Shrine, despite man's jealous efforts to discount it. I do not know how much longer this will continue, or how long God's patience with man's negative response to these graces will hold up. I only come at his command, seeking the welfare of all people and all nations. You already have war in many hearts. You have leaders who lie to you. Honest Christian efforts are opposed with more compromise. Be united in my heart refuge of holy love, which I am sent to offer you. Ask for my protection of your faith, which is so challenged today. Dear children, I am with you at this site, Maranatha Spring and Shrine, just as I am with all who travel to Lourdes. Come and believe. A note is given to read Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Scripture verse asked to be read by Our Lady of Lourdes. February 11, 2015, the Feast of Our Lady of Lourdes. Blessed Mother says, Praise be to Jesus. Dear children, pray this prayer daily. Prayer for belief in holy love apparitions. Dear Jesus, please forgive this generation for not accepting these apparitions as true. Open the hearts of unbelievers to the reality of this heavenly intervention. 
Do not allow disbelief and holy love to antagonize your wrath or hasten your justice. Please allow these apparitions, healings, and miracles to continue. Amen. February 12, 2015 I am your Jesus, born incarnate. Everything must be weighed and measured on the scale of holy love, thought, word, and deed, as to its worthiness in my eyes. If it fails in holy love in any way, have nothing to do with it. This is the proof of a well-formed conscience. Any compromise of this truth compromises your own salvation and perhaps the salvation of those you influence. If you find yourself under any authority who is leading you in a way contrary to holy love, you must in good conscience act against that authority. I call this independent righteousness. Think of all the atrocities dictators have been allowed to carry out because their followers felt obliged to obey them. History would be rewritten if people had paid attention to what they were obeying in righteous independence. This type of blind obedience takes place even today. This is why I tell you, holy love is the answer to peace. A note is given to read Galatians chapter 5, 22 through 23. Synopsis, the fruits of the Holy Spirit. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. Scripture verses asked to be read by Jesus. February 13th, 2015, Our Lady comes as Mary, refuge of holy love. She says, Praise be to Jesus. Today you live in a world where true faith is rare due to heresy, pagan practices, and self-interest in the form of abuse of authority and the compromise of truth. Heaven has offered many graces here, Maranatha Spring and Shrine, devotion to the protectress of the faith and the refuge of holy love, the journey of personal holiness through the chambers of the United Hearts, and devotion to the mournful heart of Jesus, to mention a few. Any one of these, if taken seriously, could change the direction of society today. Instead, these graces are summarily dismissed, even defamed. The spiritual strength, which could have come from any one of these devotions, has been denied, and evil has been strengthened due to this deficit. These errors will not be reversed due to pride until Jesus returns, but the power and grace these revelations carried into the world was meant for these harrowing times. Much has been lost. None of these revelations were given fair consideration in the light of truth. Therefore today I have come to gather together my remnant faithful those who humbly seek and live in the truth. Dear children, pursue personal holiness by living in holy love. Do not allow your faith to rest upon the endorsements of a few, but on the graces flowing from my immaculate heart, which is your protection. I fear my son's justice will be provoked by such bitter treatment towards heaven's apparitions here at Maranatha Spring and Shrine. I seek your help, dear remnant faithful. Pray and sacrifice that God's mercy will continue to rest upon every present moment in every corner of the world. Have courage in the presence of unbelievers. Have hope, for hope is the good fruit of trust. Never change your beliefs to please man. I am your holy refuge in your every battle. A note is given to read First Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. And we also thank God constantly for this, that when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you accepted it not as the word of men, but as what it really is, the word of God, which is at work in you believers. Scripture verses asked to be read by Mary, Refuge of Holy Love. 
February 13th, 2015, to the Remnant Faithful. Blessed Mother says, Praise be to Jesus. Dear children, I have come once again to support the Remnant Faithful, that is, those of you who still believe according to, tradi to tradition. There are some basic truths you must never forget and always defend. 1. There is a final judgment for each soul. 2. Heaven and hell are real. 3. Satan does exist and wants to destroy all truth. 4. You must stand firm on the truth between good and evil. 5. Holy love defines good and leads to your salvation. 6. All sin, all compromise of truth and abuse of authority are inspired by self-interest. 7. Never respect man and his opinions above God. Remember, God looks at what you obey, not who you obey. Each one of those points is the rock-solid foundation of the remnant faithful. Live them. February 13th, 2015, Jesus is here with his heart exposed. He says, I am your Jesus, born incarnate. My brothers and sisters, tonight I invite all people and all nations into my sacred and mournful heart. Herein I will protect you from the confusion of the world and help you to make decisions in godliness and righteousness. Tonight I am imparting to you my blessing of divine love. February 14, 2015, Our Lady comes as Mary, Refuge of Holy Love. She says, Praise be to Jesus. Dear children, I have given you the moral standards of the holy remnant of faith. These seven points must never be compromised. In the coming days, I will address the full expanse and depth of these points, one by one. As you review these points, realize that these are the ways Satan attacks you and tries to rob you of your salvation. The evil one does not want you to internalize these truths. He does not want the remnant to be united. Therefore, dear children, you must be united with a tenacious fervor, never relinquishing your right to live in the truth and to live the tradition of faith handed down to you by your forebears. You will be mocked and maligned, but I will give you the strength to persevere. The holy remnant is deep in the recesses of my immaculate heart, yet very present in the world today. It is a countersign in an evil age. A note is given that forebears are the church fathers and the apostolic successors, popes and bishops, who established and handed on the tradition of faith. February 14th, 2015, Our Lady comes as Mary, Refuge of Holy Love. She says, Praise be to Jesus. Dear children, I have given you the moral standards of the holy remnant of faith. These seven points must never be compromised. In the coming days I will address the full expanse and depth of these points, one by one. As you review these points, realize that these are the ways Satan attacks you and tries to rob you of your salvation. The evil one does not want you to internalize these truths. He does not want the remnant to be united. Therefore, dear children, you must be united with a tenacious fervor, never relinquishing your right to live in the truth and to live the tradition of faith handed down to you by your forebears. You will be mocked and maligned, but I will give you the strength to persevere. The holy remnant is deep in the recesses of my immaculate heart, yet very present in the world today. It is a countersign in an evil age. A note is given that forebears are the church fathers and the apostolic successors, popes and bishops, who established and handed on the tradition of faith. February 15th, 2015. Our Lady comes in white, but the inside of her mantle is green. She smiles and winks at me. 
she says, praise be to Jesus. The color green signifies hope. The remnant is the hope of the future of civilization. So today I am here as promised to discuss the remnant once again. The remnant, dear children, must be steadfast and firm in the seven points I have given you. It must not waver in any wind of controversy. It must not change opinions to conform with the opinions of mankind. Any departure from these maxims means a departure from the remnant faithful. The remnant must stand as a call to the return to godliness, to sound morals, and to adherence to God's commandments. As such, the remnant must be united in purpose and uncompromised in direction, despite attacks of any sort. The remnant must be a bastion of prayer and sacrifice, for this is the key that links the chain of the remnant together. The same remnant may reside in the farthest corner of the world, or it may be right here at Holy Love, Maranatha Spring and Shrine. It is still one in purpose, one in integrity and in my immaculate heart. It is the strength of tradition, the foundation of sound morals, the return of godliness, the return to godliness. It is the hope of the future. February 16th, 2015, to the Remnant Faithful, First Moral Standard of Truth. Our Lady comes as Mary, refuge of holy love. She says, Praise be to Jesus. First of all, please realize that the remnant of anything is not the the part that breaks away from the rest, but the portion that remains. Therefore, the remnant faithful is that portion of the faithful who remain devoted to the faith, while a greater portion pulls away. With this in mind, Let us now look at the first moral standard of truth as it pertains to the remnant faithful. There is a final judgment for each soul. Each soul has his moment of judgment before my son. Each soul will be judged according to the holy love or the absence of holy love in his heart as he draws his last breath. This truth does not change according to circumstance. Holy love is the doorway and path to salvation. No one enters heaven who does not love God above all else and his neighbor as himself. Holy love is God's will in action. Each soul should use his time on earth in an effort to earn his salvation. This is each one's responsibility. Free will is given as the opportunity to make the right choices and to achieve salvation. These standards of truth are guidelines towards that end. Every one of these truths support and are supported by holy love. If you make holy love a way of life, you will be prepared for the moment of judgment before my son. You will not be caught off guard. Do not think that in that moment before my son you can negotiate your way into heaven. At that moment, my son sees clearly into the virtue of your heart. Be ready. A note is given to read 1 John 4, 21. And this commandment we have from him, that he who loves God should love his brother also. Another note is given to read Second John, chapter 1, 6. And this is love, that we follow his commandments. This is the commandment, as you have heard from the beginning, that you follow love. Scripture verses asked to be read by Mary, Refuge of Holy Love. February 16th, 2015. Jesus is here with his heart exposed. He says, I am your Jesus, born incarnate. My brothers and sisters, always safeguard the peace in your hearts by avoiding whatever is destroying your peace. It is Satan who does not want you to be at peace. Let holy love rule your hearts. Thus, you will have peace and trust. Tonight, I'm blessing you with my blessing of divine love. 
February 17, 2015, to the Remnant Faithful, the second moral standard of truth. Our Lady comes as Mary, refuge of holy love. She says, Praise be to Jesus. Once again I come to address the holy Remnant Faithful, the second moral standard of truth that the Remnant Faithful must accept is the reality of heaven and hell. This is what salvation is all about, and why you should care about your final judgment. God creates each soul to share eternity with him, but it is up to the soul to choose this as well. I invite you to think for a moment about eternity. Eternity is forever, never ending. In heaven there is no time or space. The same is true of hell. These concepts of time and space are particular to the world. Jesus calls you to eternal joy and peace with him in paradise. Satan tries to obstruct your salvation and lead you through his lies and guile to eternal torture in his domain of hell. His greatest lie is that there is no hell. Do not believe him. Whether you believe in heaven or hell and hell or not, does not negate their existence. Throughout the centuries there have been many who have returned to earth to bear witness to the existence of the afterlife. If these testimonies were accepted as the truth that they are, mankind would clearly see his role in choosing his salvation. As it is, a cynical nature gives temptation its opportunity. The more the soul accepts that he has to make the effort to choose heaven, the closer he is to embracing holy love. Never be misled by any theory that there is no afterlife or that the soul gets a second chance through reincarnation. These are Satan's lies. Believe in the truth as I am giving it to you today. February 18th, 2015, to the Remnant Faithful, Third Moral Standard of Truth. Our Lady comes as Mary, refuge of holy love. She says, Praise be to Jesus. Today I come to address the next, third moral standard of truth for the Holy Remnant. That is, Satan does exist and wants to destroy all truth. If you ever want to enable an enemy, then refuse to identify him or recognize him. That is what drug addicts do. It is also what this president is doing with Islamic extremists. In the spiritual world, the soul that denies the existence of Satan in any circumstance not only enables evil, but opens the door of his heart to it. You cannot fight unless you recognize the enemy. In the world today you have evil all around you, encouraged by Satan and his minions. Evil is present in false religions and even, in certain instances, in true religions. Satan inspires governments and legislation such as abortion and sodomy. Evil is reflected in fashions, illicit use of technology and media. Any time untruth is present, Satan has stepped in. Acknowledging Satan's existence is only the first step in spiritual warfare. You must learn to recognize him even when he comes clothed in goodness. This is discernment. The enemy does not very often come with horns and a pitchfork. Often he uses good people to oppose God's good. Take, for instance, this mission of holy love, where seemingly good people openly oppose heaven's intervention here, Maranatha Spring and Shrine. He, Satan, may use good intentions towards his evil end. This is shown over and over again when people try to help one another, but Satan steps in causing scandal, physical harm, or loss of property. Satan is the father of lies and uses his lies to discredit good, misdirect the ones searching for truth, and misinform the well-intended. Satan is the enemy of all truth, 
and therefore the enemy of God's commandments and holy love. Recognize Satan's smoke in the world today. Where there is smoke, there is fire. Protect your hearts with St. Michael's shield of truth. Realize that your faith is Satan's target. Then come to me as I am the protectress of your faith. A note is given to read Ephesians chapter 6, 10 through 17. The synopsis, Prayer for Christians' Spiritual Warfare. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we are not contending against flesh and blood, but against the principalities, against the powers, against the world rulers of this present darkness, against the spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore, having girded your loins with truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the equipment of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, with which you can quench all the flaming darts of the evil one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Scripture verses asked to be read by Mary, Refuge of Holy Love. February 19th, 2015 To the Remnant Faithful The Fourth Moral Standard of Truth our Lady comes as Mary, refuge of holy love. She says, Praise be to Jesus. Today I come to speak to you once again concerning the moral standards of truth that the remnant faithful must follow. The next, fourth moral standard of truth is you must stand firm in the truth between good and evil. Realizing the truth that Satan does exist supports the fact that it is he who does not want you to disting distinguish between good and evil. He clouds the difference between good and evil with compromise. Satan's lies make sin look like freedom and portrays evil as a legal right. All the while, he is enslaving the sinner in an evil web of deceit. The truth of good is defined by holy love which is the embrace of all of God's commandments. Evil is defined in any departure from holy love. Do not be persuaded along any path that leads away from God's commandments, holy love. Do not attempt to redefine good as evil. Truth is always the truth. Sin is always sin. You must accept that sin does exist, and every soul sins. The holy remnant faithful must never be afraid of confronting evil and identifying it. Misplaced compassion for the sinner is often Satan's tool which placates the sinner and encourages the sin. This does not support the truth. Often, as a soul advances in holiness, he falls into the trap of self-righteousness. He may even take pride in his knowledge of satanic endeavors, thinking himself quite powerful against satanic activity. This is yet another ploy of evil. Remember, holy love and holy humility go hand in hand. It is the humble soul who must easily, most easily discerns good from evil. Such a soul knows his own weaknesses and strengths. He does not let his personal likes or dislikes influence his decisions of good versus evil. Dear children, as part of the holy remnant faithful, be willing to help others discover the truth between good and evil, not with sanctimony, but with holy love. February 20th, 2015, to the remnant faithful, fifth moral standard of truth. 
Our Lady comes as Mary, refuge of holy love. She says, Praise be to Jesus. In order for a person to distinguish good from evil, his conscience must be formed in righteousness, godliness. This can only be accomplished through holy love. This brings me to the next, fifth maxim, moral standard of truth for the remnant faithful. Holy love defines good and leads to your salvation. Holy love, to love God above all else and your neighbor as yourself, is the embodiment of all of the Ten Commandments. No one enters heaven outside of holy love. There is no back door, no negotiating. Holy love is the path to personal holiness and your salvation. A conscience that does not completely embrace holy love is compromised. The more people the soul influences in his compromise of truth, the greater his sin. In searching for the truth, the soul need only to turn to holy love as a standard. Anything which opposes holy love is cooperating with evil. You cannot give God your whole heart if you keep part of it for yourself. Therefore, what you love in the world, reputation, power, authority, physical appearance, or worldly possessions are obstacles to holy love. Use everything as a means to your salvation. The hope of the remnant faithful is to remain faithful to holy love and to regard everything through the eyes of holy love. This is the way to avoid Satan's deceit, the compromise of truth, and the abuse of authority. Holy love is truth and God's will for all mankind. You cannot hang on to the remnant of faith if you do not hang on to holy love. A note is given to read 1 John chapter 3, 19 through 24. Synopsis, formation of a good conscience is based on the truth of holy love, the embodiment of the Ten Commandments. By this we shall know that we are of the truth, and reassure our hearts before him, whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God, and we receive from him whatever we ask, because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment that we should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. All who keep his commandments abide in him, and he in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the Spirit which he has given us. Scripture verses asked to be read by Mary, Refuge of Holy Love. February 21st, 2015, to the Remnant Faithful, Sixth Moral Standard of Truth. Our Lady comes as Mary, refuge of holy love. She says, Praise be to Jesus. I come to you once again with hope for the Remnant Faithful. The basic Sixth Moral Standard of Truth I will address today is this. All sin, all compromise of truth and abuse of authority are inspired by self-interest. This is not possible if the soul's conscience is formed in holy love. No sin is committed accidentally, but only through free will. The sinner loves the sin more than God and neighbor. Sin is self-serving. The sinner has some disordered self-interest he wants to fulfill. At the moment of surrender to sin, this want takes precedence over righteousness. The soul may compromise the truth, convincing himself sin is not a sin. This compromise is, in itself, a sin and full of self-interest. Each soul has the responsibility to find the truth between good and evil. Authority is abused when the leader has his own self-interest at heart and not the welfare of his followers. 
Perhaps he leads people away from the truth in an effort to make his own authority more powerful. He may concern himself with money and his own reputation above the responsibility of his position. Such authority is not trustworthy or even worthy of obedience. The remnant faithful must take note of this, for many are misled and misinformed through this particular sin. I want to give you, dear remnant, the support of knowing you do not lose favor with me if you act in good conscience supporting the maxim, standard of truth, of holy love, despite disordered authority or compromise of truth. I, your heavenly mother, stand with you. Many sacred traditions may fall by the wayside in the future. I will be with you to help you ferret out the truth. Do not fear, but be cautious. Caution is prudence. Fear is a spirit which destroys your peace. A note is given to read 2 Thessalonians 2, 13-15, the synopsis encouraging words to the remnant faithful. But we are bound to give thanks to God always for you, Brethren, beloved by the Lord, because God chose you from the beginning to be saved through sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth. To this he called you through our gospel, so that you may obtain the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. So then, brethren, stand firm and hold to the traditions which you were taught by us, either by word of mouth or by letter. Scripture verses asked to be read by Mary, Refuge of Holy Love. February 22, 2015, to the Remnant Faithful, the Seventh Moral Standard of Truth. Our Lady comes as Mary, Refuge of Holy Love. She says, Praise be to Jesus. Today, once again, I come to offer courageous support to the Holy Remnant Faithful. As you discover where the truth lies, hidden under compromise, you must never be dissuaded to relinquish it by opinions of influence. This is the last, seventh, moral standard of truth for the remnant faithful. Never respect man and his opinions above God. Remember, God looks at what you obey, not who you obey. Opinions have a way of becoming actions in the world. That is what makes opinions important. Opinions become laws and levy undue burdens on those who feel obliged to support and obey the law. Opinions alter the flavor of governments, institutions, and even challenge the security of nations. It is opinions which bring a political atmosphere into the church and state. These days, most opinions lead away from obedience to the Ten Commandments and holy love, and towards sin through compromised truth. The remnant you know is not just one particular religion trying to cling to long-standing church tradition. Rather, it is all who desire to perpetuate Christian morals and standards of truth, which are fading away in this present-day generation. People's opinions on morals are being changed through mass media, which presents sin as commonplace and acceptable. People who choose sinful lifestyles are held up as admirable, and those who object are discriminated against. Therefore, the focus is not on eradicating error, but accepting it. The remnant must not accept such error over and above God's laws. It does not matter who accepts what. It matters if you believe error or the truth. God looks into the heart, not at popular opinion. Each soul must embrace God's laws above all else. Therein lies his judgment. Dear children, avoid quickly accepting popular opinion. Rather, search for God's truth through holy love. This is the path to your salvation. It is God's opinion of you that will matter 
and determine your eternity. Form your opinions around pleasing God, not on being accepted by those of compromise in the world. This will take a determined effort, but grace will be your ally. This is the hope of the remnant faithful. A note is given to read 1 Timothy chapter 4, 1 through 2 and 7 through 8. The synopsis, warning of false and deceitful teachers who lead the faithful away from truth. Now the Spirit expressly says that in later times some will depart from the faith by giving heed to deceitful spirits and doctrines of demons through the pretensions of liars whose consciences are seared have nothing to do with godless and silly myths. Train yourself in godliness. For while bodily training is of some value, godliness is of value in every way, as it holds promise for the present life and also for the life to come. Another note is given to read 2 Timothy chapter 3, 1 through 5. The synopsis warning of false and deceitful teachers who lead the faithful away from truth. But understand this, that in the last days there will come times of stress, for men will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, inhuman, implacable, slanderers, profligates, fierce, haters of good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, holding the form of religion but denying the power of it. Avoid such people. Scripture verses asked to be read by Mary, Refuge of Holy Love. February 23, 2015 To the Remnant Faithful Our Lady comes as Mary, refuge of holy love. She says, Praise be to Jesus. It should be clear to the remnant faithful that caution must dictate whom you believe in and trust. Those worthy of belief support the truth and do not speak or act according to self-interest. They hold no hidden agenda in their hearts, therefore no guile. This is true of all leaders, secular or religious. The ones who object most to my advice to you today are the leaders who want absolute power. It is never wrong to look at the direction you are being led. Does it support the Ten Commandments and thus holy love? It is your sovereign duty as a Christian to examine this. Too many are misled and misinformed. Too much righteousness is clothed in silence and never proclaimed. I am telling you these things not to be rebellious, but rather to be united in the truth, which is holy love. A note is given to read Philippians chapter 2, 1 through 5. Synopsis, encouragement to be of the same mind and heart, united in holy love and holy humility through the united hearts. So if there is any encouragement in Christ, any incentive of love, any participation in the Spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfishness or conceit, but in humility count others better than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Have this mind among yourselves, which was in Christ Jesus. Scripture verses asked to be read by Mary, Refuge of Holy Love. February 23, 2015. Jesus is here with his mournful heart exposed. He says, I am your Jesus, born incarnate. My brothers and sisters, please be united in holy love. As the remnant faithful draw together in righteousness, do not find fault with one another, but find common ground in our united hearts. If you do this, you will be given the grace to become part of the remnant faithful and remain so. Tonight, I'm blessing you with my blessing of divine love.
February 24th, 2015, to the remnant faithful. Our Lady comes as Mary, refuge of holy love. She says, Praise be to Jesus. I must make clear that the remnant faithful is comprised of all Christians, not just Catholics. The remnant is the coming together of those who hold Christian moral values in their hearts, despite the compromise of truth in the world. You, dear remnant, must make the effort to be united in the truth, as Satan is uniting evil in untruth. If you do not answer my call to be united, you will be defeated. Do not oppose one another. Recognize the enemy and oppose him. That is why it is so important to distinguish good from evil. To all leaders, religious and secular, I tell you, do not make social justice your goal. If you do, you ultimately condone sins which call upon God's justice. You weaken the morals of society instead of strengthening them. You are working to unite evil. Catholics must be united in church tradition and not accept language which supports illicit change. Stand shoulder to shoulder in the truth. Be accountable to the truth, not to man. My son has sent me with these messages for the remnant to unite everyone in the truth. Do not look to some new definition of the truth. Be courageous in your fight against untruth. Pray to recognize the enemy who always disguises himself behind some good. Remember, I am your protectress and your mother. I love you. A note is given to read Romans chapter 2, 13. For it is not the hearers of the law who are righteous before God, but the doers of the law who will be justified. Another note is given to read Romans sixteen, seventeen through 18. I appeal to you, brethren, to take note of those who create dissensions and difficulties. In opposition to the doctrine which you have been taught, avoid them. For such persons do not serve our Lord Christ, but their own appetites, and by fair and flattering words they deceive the hearts of the simple-minded. Another note is given to read Romans chapter 1, 18 32, and chapter 2, 6 through 8. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and wickedness of men, who by their wickedness support, suppress the truth. Though they know God's decree that those who do such things deserve to die, they not only do them, but approve those who practice them. For he will render to every man according to his works, to those who by patience in well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality. He will give eternal life. But for those who are factious and do not obey the truth, but obey wickedness, there will be wrath and fury. Scripture verses asked to be read by Mary, Refuge of Holy Love. February 25th, 2015, to the Remnant Faithful. Our Lady comes as Mary, refuge of holy love. She says, Praise be to Jesus. You are asking me how the remnant can be united. This all goes back to discerning good from evil. These days, good people oppose good people. Take, for example, this mission. It is misrepresented and misunderstood by otherwise good people. Too often, these are people who trust in the opinions of others and do not try to discern the truth themselves. The hope of the remnant is discernment of good versus evil. This is why the seal of discernment is offered here. Maranatha Spring and Shrine February 26th, 2015 Our Lady comes as Mary, refuge of holy love. She says... Praise be to Jesus. Just for a moment, imagine that I had come to you with the offer of one million dollars for yourself 
and to distribute it far and wide around the world. People would have flocked around you, hands open. But I have come to offer much more. I offer the path of personal holiness and salvation. This gift is met with skepticism at best, and even opposed. The difference is the convoluted values in the world today. The heart of the world is spiritually impoverished and unwilling to seek or accept a solution. Solutions are sought out in materialistic ways, but mankind's relationship with God suffers greater and greater insults, moment by moment. You cannot kill the life God places in the womb and expect your relationship with God to remain untarnished. You cannot legalize sodomy and expect to hold God's favor. I have asked for holy love to be spread around the world. Precious to me are those who eagerly accept this challenge. Some have been converted, have turned away from the false promises of the world, and have strengthened the remnant faithful. Others listen half-heartedly. Still others oppose me. Each one of my visits to you seeks the same end, the conversion of the heart of the world. Those of you who are listening must pray for this. What I offer to you is eternal and worth much more than any amount of money. February 27th, 2015 Jesus says, I am your Jesus, born incarnate. I wish to describe to you a good and worthy leader. Such a leader has the welfare of his followers first and foremost in his heart. He does not lead according to his own benefit. He does not allow power, reputation, or love of money to control his decisions. A worthy leader is a reflection of the remnant faithful as he practices the moral standards of truth. The good leader has no guile, no hidden agenda, but is open and truthful in every endeavor. Therefore, he is trustworthy. In the world today, there are few such leaders as I have described to you. Politics rules hearts and thus decisions. Honesty is synonymous with truth. Truth bespeaks clarity, transparency, reality. Most in leadership roles today are concerned with themselves, their importance, reputation, and climb to success. These are not the ones you should follow if you wish to follow me. A note is given to read 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, 3 through 6. Synopsis the motives of leaders in preaching the gospel are in what is most pleasing to God and in accordance to the divine will, not in what is acceptable and sought after as praiseworthy by men. For our appeal does not spring from error or uncleanness, nor is it made with guile. But just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel, so we speak not to please men, but to please God who tests our hearts. For we never used either words of flattery, as you know, or a cloak for greed, as God is witness. Nor did we seek glory from men, whether from you or from others, though we might have made demands as apostles of Christ. February 28, 2015 Jesus says, I am your Jesus, born incarnate. A good leader is identified by what he embraces and what he opposes. You should not follow and obey one who opposes the standards of truth as laid out for the remnant faithful. Such a one leads according to his own self-interest. I must reiterate what my mother said. I am not telling you these things to stir rebellion in your heart, but to unite you in the truth. If you support a leader who favors abortion or same-sex marriage, you are supporting evil. This evil will only change through lack of public support. As Christians, you must oppose such evils and oppose those who support them. Another example is the situation where a religious leader does not support to the fullest the spiritual well-being of his flock. 
he would not be embracing the truth either. I would never hold you bound to obedience to any evil. You can only trust those who live in truth and in the truth encourage godliness. Honesty will follow. These are the leaders you need to unite behind. A note is given to read 1 Peter chapter 5, 2 through 4. The synopsis, encouragement of shepherds of the church, priests and bishops, to tend their flocks in the pattern of the chief shepherd, Jesus Christ, with divine love and mercy, not lording over under constraint of obedience or for self-gain. Tend the flock of God that is your charge, not by constraint, but willingly, not for shameful gain, but eagerly, not as domineering over those in your charge, but by being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd is manifested, you will obtain the unfading crown of glory. Scripture verses asked to be read by Jesus.